Part 7 The Shrine of Stupidity and how to take the longest time to reach it. So this chapter has two different versions, but they're mostly the same narratively, other than some differences in the script that I will address. So we only just got here, and Edward is already unloading stupidity on us. We moved to burn from here in an instant. Incredible. What? To burn from here? But here is burn, isn't it? Maybe this was just some bad grammar, but it also contradicts what literally just happened. Recap. Athos warped you to Foray, which is in Lycia, and then you walked here yourselves. This was even made explicitly clear at the end of last chapter, and in the narrator's introduction to the chapter itself. Look, they even walk on the map to this point. So, this is another bizarre mistranslation. Elwood's line in Japanese is as follows. Koko kara ga berunda. Sugoi na. Mura hazori na no ni. Oji seijin no gishi wo. The English script's version of the first line is pretty much entirely fabricated. There is nothing about warping or being moved anywhere in an instant. Ellenwood's exact words are, from here on, it's burn. Admittedly, this phrase can carry some slightly different meanings depending on the context, but here, Ellenwood is just affirming their location, so something like, we're in burn now, would be fine. I have a theory as to how this translation error occurred. First is that the translator seems to have taken the word kokokara from here on as two separate words that have similar but different meanings. Koko here and kara from. The from can carry different connotations depending on the tense, and the here the translator seems to have gone for past tense instead of the intended future tense. Then the specific expression of wonder in the next line was attributed to the first line, when it's really more about how the village is preparing for Zephiel's coming of age ceremony. When translating Japanese, it's common to start translating from the end of a sentence, so the translator may have missed the period, or just thought it was connected, possibly because of the ellipses. Hence, when put together, there is an implication that Elliwood is amazed at moving from here, along with burn, and da, basically to be, but it is, is how you would translate it here, getting something like, to be burned from here? Amazing. With the mistranslation now solidified, presumably the translator or editor then thought they needed to expand Elliwood's statement to try to clarify it, so they invented a bunch of lines to justify it. However, given the direct contradiction with the previous chapter, it seems they either didn't care, or they didn't read the script. For some reason, the line break here, indicated by the arrows, is done differently to make the expression stand by itself, but I can't say for sure that this is relevant. I also need to point out that Elliwood's first line is exactly the same in Linus's version of this map, and there it was translated correctly using the second translation I suggested. Also, the bit about the posters or signs isn't really terribly important even if it's translated differently. The meaning was conveyed properly, so I'm not going to get into that. Did the proofreaders give as little of a fuck as the writers did? Jesus Christ, this ain't a high school assignment. So after spending a bunch of time talking to Athos, then going home to Foray, then walking all the way here. Now Elliwood thinks to ask, by the way, do you know where this place we're supposed to go is? Dude, do you think you could have asked this before you set out for the shrine? Why didn't you ask Athos, the guy who apparently knows everything? Why didn't Athos make sure they knew before they left? Did he just say, alright, go to the Shrine of Seals, and everyone just nodded without asking, where is that? Thankfully, Penn saves the day, since he knows the general location, because he's a high-ranking Aturian dude. But the problem is that it's too heavily guarded. And if they just barge in, then Burn is very likely to use that as an excuse to invade Lycia. So they have to get to the Shrine of Seals without ever having their identity become known to Burn. If they had just discussed these problems in their meeting with Athos, then they wouldn't need to have this conversation right now, so I can only presume that this stuff never came up. So that fade-out back in the previous chapter, was just another unnecessary bullshit mystery thing, since nothing seems to have been discussed there except go to the Shrine of Seals, which doesn't need a fucking time skip. Didn't Athos know how risky this whole operation was? I guess he knew ahead of time that they weren't going to get caught. Ever. Also, how can the Shrine really be a secret anyway? This is a world where people fly all over the place on Wyverns and Pegasi. We know from both this game and FE6 that the Shrine is a huge thing in the middle of an open field, so it can't be that hard to discover. So, do they have a no-fly zone around the damn thing? The amount of resources required to maintain a no-fly zone around such a large thing are pretty vast. Like, 
All those wyvern knights need places to rest whilst not on duty, and they need to eat. Regular convoys of supplies or troops traveling to and from this location would be pretty noticeable. So unless there's a large fortress along with a farm and such to maintain the garrison there, and I don't see one, do you? Then how are you keeping it a secret? And what if Pent hadn't felt like coming along? It's not like Athos told him to, he just volunteered. They would have been even more screwed than they already are. I guess it was destiny. So Pent comes up with this plan on the fly. Because his wife, Louise, is related to Helene, the Queen of Bern, he'll be able to talk to the Queen in private. During that time, he will discreetly ask about the shrine and hope she says something useful, although he's not terribly optimistic about the prospects here. Sounds about as good as you could hope for, I guess. Except for this last bit. If we do not return by tomorrow, return to Lycia and come up with a new plan. Understood? Man, so they really didn't have any idea about what they were doing after all. Athos told them jack shit, and they traveled all the way here from Foray without even once considering a course of action. I guess they just walked here all the way in silence. The biggest joke about all of this is that it isn't even necessary for the shrine's location to be secret, for the plot to work. The fact that it's well guarded and that it will cause political turmoil that may lead to a war if they're discovered here, which is exactly what Nurgle wants, is enough reason already for them not to go there immediately, and instead they have to deploy stealth or diplomacy. Penn's meeting could have been about negotiating for the Queen's permission to visit the location, and, in fact, that's basically what happens later on anyway. It's pretty obvious that the reason this is structured so poorly is because the writers wanted to simultaneously achieve two goals without compromise. The first was having the last chapter end on an emotional note with Elliwood reuniting with his mom for the first time since the start of the game, along with an air of wonder at Athos' existence and his magical capabilities and warping. This one is understandable. The second was starting the next map in Burn. Now this one sort of makes sense, because most of the introductory sequences usually has the main lord moving to the location of the chapter on the world map, where the rest of the chapter takes place. But they could have easily just had them refer to their plan in past tense for the viewer. In fact, I'm inclined to believe that the plan was originally conceived in Foray at the end of the last chapter, but was moved without much editing to the start of this one to preserve the previously mentioned emotional mood. However, there is a problem with this theory, in that chapter 16 starts in Laos, but takes place in Caelan. Given that this map focuses on Lin, I take this to be more evidence of how Lin was awkwardly inserted into the script, rather than a real counterpoint, as this is the only place where a chapter occurs in a different location from where it began. Anyway, before Pent leaves, Hawkeye does his best to outstupid everyone else. Apparently, Athos asked Hawkeye to bring along a Heaven Seal to give to one of the Lords, but Hawkeye is unsure of when to give it to them, and instead he just wants to give it to Pent. Huh? Hey dumbass, if Athos entrusted the thing to you, then I think you'll do fine. Did Athos know that Hawkeye would give it to Pent? Why didn't Athos give it to Pent to begin with then? And even if you trust Pent's judgement more than your own, that doesn't mean he needs to carry the thing. Are you just too lazy to keep it with you? Hawkeye seems awfully certain that Pent and Louise will return, but why take the risk? And what if the time to give it to them is when Pent is gone? That would be pretty awkward. A lot of people tend to think that the game tried to imply that the ancient artifact Pent found in the desert was a heaven seal, possibly this one. But that doesn't make much sense, because it would mean Pent found the heaven seal, gave it to Athos off screen, then Athos gave it to Hawkeye, and Hawkeye is now about to give that heaven seal back to Pent. That's stupid, and you think Pent would say something about it if it was. Alternatively, the thing in the desert is an irrelevant thingamajing that was only there so Pent had a reason to be in Nevada. You decide. Or it was the script. Now that Pent and Louise have left, Hollywood and friends are sitting around in Burn, bored out of their minds because they got nothing to do. Should have thought of that before you came here. Could have brought your Game Boy Advance along. Have you heard of this new tactical game called Wargroove? You should try it. Instead, they decide to listen to Legault's stupid advice about looking around for information on the Black Fang. Why? Is this really worth the risk? The Lords are wearing disguises right now, and they just talked about how if Burn finds out they're here, that could start a war. Or was that just about if they're found trying to get to the shrine? I don't know. The game isn't really clear about this, but whatever, it's still a stupid idea. Especially considering it's Legault who suggests this, and he's meant to be good at the whole stealth thing. I wonder what they would have done if Legault was dead, or he didn't recruit him. Oh wait, 
He shows up anyway, because the localizer's fucked up and created a bug that only exists in the English version. Great programming, guys. You know what else is stupid about the gold here? The fact that he used to be one of the four fangs, but he doesn't know the location of their headquarters. He doesn't know any of them, in fact. And the problem is not that they moved around after he left or anything. It was never disclosed to him. Are you kidding me? This is made even dumberer by the fact that in the Japanese version, they don't even need Le Gold to suggest his line of investigation. I bet my stoma bag that in the first draft, Le Gold didn't show up here at all, and somebody only realized way later that it would be kinda stupid if the notable Black Fang member in their party had nothing to say about this. So they shoved in a one-line excuse for why he doesn't know anything. This attempt to fix a potential plot hole is like trying to fix a burst pipe with fucking duct tape. It doesn't fix the main problem, and it just makes you look like a lazy idiot. Anyway, so the lords split up and walk around town and are immediately spotted by the sons of the Black Fang leader Brendan Reed, Lloyd and Linus. Lloyd makes it clear that they thought they were in Nevada, which makes me wonder, why the fuck weren't you in Nevada then? You've been assigned to kill Ellywood like three chapters ago. What else was on your agenda that was so important? Now depending on what version you're playing, one of the brothers leaves and the other stays and attacks you. And there's a stupid excuse in both scenarios for why they don't just both attack you. In Lloyd's version, Lloyd's plan is to draw them to the fortress, while Linus goes to get reinforcements because fangs cannot afford mistakes. Doesn't dragging out a battle into an elongated skirmish increase the chances of mistakes? But no. Lloyd leaves the walking up to them part to one of the underlings, who, obviously, announces himself as Black Fang. What else is new? In the Linus version, Lloyd says it's against their creed to attack targets in the town, so he's going to tell father and await his orders, while having Linus keep an eye on them. Didn't you already get your orders from Brendan and Sonia? Your orders are to kill them! And you know that Linus is an overeager moron who always wants to fight really badly. Unsurprisingly, Linus makes his move almost immediately after Lloyd leaves. He sends a henchman to tell Ellie what he's about to be assassinated. Is that part of the creed too? There are two stupid and annoying recruitables in this chapter as well, but thankfully you only get one depending on the version. Wallace somehow got lost on his way to Kaelin and ended up in Burn while Geats is figuratively lost because he doesn't know what to do with his life. Wow. So deep. I take back everything. There is also a dude in the house who entrusts whoever visits him with a treasure because he has a feeling you will aid the prince with it. Apparently Nils and Linian's predictive powers aren't so special after all. At the end of the battle, the lords defeat the remaining brother. They lower their guard, and this allows the brother to grab Aliwood and take him hostage. Lloyd says he'll let the rest of them go after he deals with Aliwood, and Linus just talk about taking Aliwood with him. So why bother taking him hostage like that? Why not just kill him? In both scenarios, whilst being restrained, Aliwood manages to say the exact thing that prevents either brother from killing him. Somehow it's this, and not every bit of doubt they had before that makes them decide that the creepy looking woman might not have been telling the truth, and the brother hurries up to try to sort these things out. Unfortunately for him, Limstella swoops in and kills him for his quintessence. Pretty convenient that they did that before you could tell anyone what he had discovered. Man, I sure hope we don't end up with any awkward misunderstandings over this later on. Oh... Elliwood remarks that maybe the Black Fang really are just being used by Nurgle. I thought this was pretty much a foregone conclusion at this point. What do you mean, we should talk to Brendan Reed? Who cares? You're on a mission to save the world, fuck the Black Fang. Speaking of the Black Fang, some shit happened with Nino and Jafar in this map, but I'll talk about most of it later. The only thing that's worth pointing out now is Jafar's line about how Nino should have killed him, because it's apparently also the law of the Fang to sacrifice the wounded to salvage the strong. Jafar has succeeded in eliminating his targets and is now resting in a safe house. What does killing him achieve at all? What a fucking stupid rule! Then the game shows a scene in the Burn Manse, where we learn of the inner conflict in the royal family of Burn. In case you forgot, King Desmond and Queen Helen have a son named Zephiel, who is going to come of age in 10 days and be named heir to the throne of Burn. However, Desmond and Helene's marriage is not a happy one, 
and the king has an illegitimate daughter named Guinevere, with another unnamed woman that he lives with in the palace. Desmond hates Zephiel for various reasons to do with his shitty marriage, and doesn't want him to become the heir to the throne. So he somehow hides the fire emblem, which is Burns' royal treasure, which means that Zephiel's coming of age ceremony cannot take place. After Desmond has sufficiently explained his motives to the viewer, he leaves Helene in tears. Louise and Pent come to see her and promise to help her out, and so begins the wild panther chase. A wild panther chase. Jesus fucking Christ, all this was just one chapter.